made it on the rise. What do you think about that? I think the normalization of this anti-Israel rhetoric that is actually demonizing the Jewish people um, has caused anti-Semitism to rise. You know, when, when it's normalized that you can say whatever you want about the Jewish state and you can say they don't have the right to exist, then that's encouraging and enabling people to be anti-Semitic openly. I think we also talked about on the BDS movement, which a lot of people don't realize that um, what, what is going on in Israel, there are companies like SodaStream and who had a lot of Palestinians. It isn't just in Israel. People that work for Israeli companies are not just Israel, Israelis. They're also Palestinians. And when you do this to a company, say like SodaStream, uh, which uh, there was a lot of BDS problems, you know, and rhetoric, and, and well, as the company closed, all the Palestinians that work for this company also lost their jobs. Okay. And their jobs, and, and one thing I have to make clear that the Palestinians that work for Israeli companies make the same amount of money as, a pal as an Israeli in that particular field. You know, whatever they're working on, they don't, do not discriminate. They don't pay the Palestinian half of what the Israeli gets. They all get the same amount of money. And when you hurt the company, you're hurting not only the Israeli that works for the company, but the Palestinian as well, and he has to take home a paycheck. He has to pay his rent and his uh, for his children and clothes for the family. They got to feed their family, and I and I said that you need to train the Palestinians that are at your colleges that what's happening to the Palestinians there. They need to speak out for them because a lot of their families still live there even though they may be part of the United States and they go to University of Illinois, Northwestern, and other schools, they, they, are, they have family that still works for Israeli companies. And when these students all you know, protest against, you know, as, you know, they do the sanctions and divestment you know, and, uh, against these people, they are really hurting their families. And I think this needs to be talked about. And, and I think I mentioned earlier, you need to get some Palestinians working with the BDS movement, with the Israeli students there, to show other people that this is not the right way to go. Yeah, and I think you actually bring up a great point that I want to mention, um, is the fact that this actually really shows the true purpose of the BDS movement. The true purpose of the BDS movement is not as it's tried to be de described or advertised as helping the Palestinian people. That's another front. The true purpose of the BDS movement is to alienate Jewish students on campus and try to silence their voices. I see. So, but if, if you got some Palestinians working with the Israeli students, they'll hear they'll hear a different voice. They need to hear a different voice. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing we always try to do on campus, and especially with the Alliance Public Affairs Committee, is we show people the truth about what's actually happening with these movements. And so, when we had a BDS campaign on our campus last semester, one of the ways we went about defeating it was doing a lot of education about the student body about the true efforts of BDS and that divestment is meant to cause division and that divestment is not actually a human rights campaign but actually something that's meant to further marginalize the Jewish community. And through that education, we found our message very effective and we were able to end up winning the vote. The vote was the most voted on item in 150 years of the University of Illinois' history. And we were able to get such a large turnout because we were able to educate people that they were being fooled by the BDS movement and that this is not the way to peace. And if they truly br believe in bringing people together and bringing our campus community together, they need to be voting no. And we were successful in that effort. That's wonderful. How do you get? How do you do that? How do you get finally get people to listen to you? You know, because you know, they hear the opposite rhetoric all the time. How do you get them to hear what you have to say? Either one of you. Well, one thing that we find very effective is telling personal stories. So, like you touched on with the fact that with SodaStream, that was one example of a company that was targeted by BDS. And so telling personal stories of Palestinians who've suffered under BDS is one way to do so. But in general, on campus, when we're advocating for Israel and for the U.S.-Israel relationship, we talk about personal stories and how people's own lives are improved by Israel and our relationship with Israel. And that's really the best way to get into students' heads and 
I think when you really are able to make those personal relationships, people will open up and um, even though the media will like to say one thing, um, if they know you and they, you tell them that this is a really important issue to you, they'll, they'll be more receptive to those pro Israel messages. How do you, do you think that, I, you know, we're doing a show, this is our you know, Highland Park uh, Access show, and I'm very proud to be part of this group because we were able to get our messages out and a lot of the, uh, the mainstream media is not doing that for you guys. Why is that? Why can't, you know, like CNN and, um, and all these MSNBC and Fox News, why are they not getting stand with, uh, with us? Why don't they get your movement out? You don't hear any of this on the mainstream TV at all. What's, what's happening? Are, are you not getting on the shows or, or what, what's going on? Maybe. Sure, so Stand With Us actually has really great connections with a lot of the mainstream media. Um, and working with the media to get our message out, our message is really education is the most important thing. Education is the route to peace. Um, and by educating people about what's truly happening on the ground, we can further the peace process. You know, we were talking about earlier about how uh, it's very easy to paint it as two, uh, just two sides, but not think about it as individuals. Elon mentioned personal stories, right? Yes. Personal stories are extremely important because it really makes you seem like it's not an us versus them, right? It's this is my story. This is why this is important to me. Uh, I'd like to show you why why it is important to me. Um, so really, not showing it as like an us versus them, but showing it as this is a personal thing that a lot of people go through. I think is very important. And you need to get yourself out there. Because it's free. you guys are out there, but a lot of people don't know about you. And I think it's really important. Tell me, how did you get uh, involved in, in this movement and in, in, the, in um, uh, Stand With Us? How did, we'll start with you. Um, you go ahead. Elon? Sure, so I got involved with the pro Israel community when I was entering high school. Um, I was on several trips to Israel, and specifically, I was there in 2014 during the conflict with Gaza during the summer, and I was realizing that I was no longer able to be a passive observer to what was happening there, and that the Israeli people are under constant threat of attack, and that when I was going to go back to the U.S., I could not sit silent about it. So I became involved in high school, and then going into college, I joined a lot of public affairs committee and became involved there, and now I'm serving as co-president of the organization. So. It's been a path through education and training that I've been here, and my job now as co-president is to raise up the new generation of young pros or advocates and teach them how to spread our message to even more people. That, that's good. I'm very, you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. It, and you're a uh, junior? Yes, I am. You're going into your junior year. Yes. And so you have a lot of work still, junior year yes. and senior year there. And the same thing with you, A10. Yeah. How did you get involved into the movement? So my story actually starts a lot longer before I was born. It starts back in the 1960s in the former Soviet Union. Uh, so my parents were born in Ukraine. Growing up Jewish there, they weren't religious, but they were obviously, they were culturally Jewish. Um, and they were constantly bullied by their peers and they were constantly facing true anti-Semitism just for being Jewish. They moved from the Soviet Union to Israel where I was born, then they ended up relocating to the United States. Um, and having grown up here my whole life, I never thought I would experience the same anti-Semitism that they, they did. You know, I grew up in Buffalo Grove, a northwest suburb, um, surrounded by a pretty good Jewish population. So I never thought I would actually experience true anti-Semitism until I got to a college campus. And when I got to campus, I realized that anti-Semitism was actually very alive and very well through the anti-Israel movement. What happened to you? How did it, what, did, how did, what, what was your experience of anti-Semitism? Well, it was really just the fact that I, I saw the activity of anti-Israel groups on campus. It wasn't any one particular in instance. It was just that I never experienced anti-Israel or anti-Semitism uh, before. And I do, did when I got to campus. So I got involved with... Jewish organizations, with pro-Israel organizations, and I tried to find as many ways to help as I could. 
That, that's very smart. So, you know, when you feel, everyone should know. In fact, I think we were talking even earlier today, um, we were talking about that this should start at, in middle school. I know there's, there, you guys get on campuses, you know, to uh, high school campuses, and you talk to high school kids. But, you know, being that there's social media, remember, I come from, I come from radio days, actually, so that dates me. That was before I, we, before television. Can you imagine that? Uh, we had a radio, a uh, little Bakelite radio. I bet you don't even know what Bakelite is. <laughs> <laughs> First plastics that were, it is, it was Bakelite. And so that was where I come from. And so people didn't hear about these things, only from the radio. If you listen to your radio, television wasn't even there. It came a little bit later, of course, we had television. But, um, and there's, but you guys have social media. So, you know, the younger people, uh, see things a lot earlier. They get it instantly. You know, it's, uh, you get it immediately. You know, everything that's going on. So education should, I believe that it should be in middle school. What is your feelings about it? Are, it, would it, it, are they starting to go into the schools and talk about it? So, they, so the kids can be prepared before they go to college that they may uh, encounter some of these things. You don't want them to get into camp. You like you would happen to you. You went from Buffalo Grove High School and you got on campus, and there it was. You know, anti-Israel uh, slogans and anti-Semitism. How do you work with kids before they go to school? Well, that's a great point. I think that it's really important for us to be reaching people as young as possible. And I think that's something the pros movement is embracing more and more. But I think that one way we have to grow is with new media. And as you mentioned, young people today are um, learning about the world through new ways, especially on the internet and through video and new media content. And that's something that we really need to get better at as a personal movement. And it's really the student leaders on college campuses like myself and Natan who are leading that movement. And we're able to engage people on multiple social media platforms through all kinds of media, through video, through writing through other creative means, and that's really what we find is the most effective way to reach people. And we're going to be doing even more of that in the upcoming semester, and we have some really great, exciting things planned. That's good. And you? Yeah, and I think, as you, as you mentioned, we talked about this at lunch, too, is uh, kids have more access to more information and more rapidly, right? You have a little five-inch window that fits in your pocket that you can pull out, and you can find any information you want within seconds. Right. Uh, and while social media may have its detriments in a lot of ways, um, and it can often get things ne like spread that aren't necessarily the truest uh, information. It also has a lot of power because we can use it also to our advantage. Um, we can use it to spread messages of education, of peace. Um, so I think it's kind of a, almost a double-edged edged sword. Exactly, because yeah. I, I think this is so important. I know my own grandson that lives in Texas, I mean, he was getting, he was completely misinformed. I didn't even know that, how much he knew until we started talking, because he was going to college, and I right away I wanted to prepare him in case there was any kind of anti-Semitism. And he already knew a lot more than I thought he did, and a lot of the stuff was not correct. And um, so um, and I was kind of shocked by it because I didn't think he even knew anything at that point. And, and they're learning at a very young age. And I think it's very important. Um, I'm so happy to have this group with me today because um, you know, the word has to be spread. Stand With Us is a wonderful, uh, just a wonderful movement. And I want to thank both of you, Ilan, Thank you very much. Thank you for being here, and Eitan. It so was a pleasure having, having both of you here today and explaining to our viewers about anti-Israel is a new anti-Semitism, because a lot of people don't realize that anti-Israel is also about anti-Semitism. Right. And uh, it's something that nobody talks about. It's kind of hidden. And I thought that this was, uh, you, know, and I, you know, this was a very uh, good thing to that our viewers need to know. And I highly recommend you guys got to get on uh, other networks besides myself, my show, uh, and just spread the word around because I think it's so important that people hear what you guys have to say. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you very much. So much for having